In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. Welcome to Midnight Movie Matinee. I'm your host, Steven. And I'm Danielle. And? Yes. And yes? And yes, I am Danielle. And we're here in sunny Miami under beautiful palm trees, sipping cocktails on the beach. Those are all lies. Those are all lies. But that's what Tahiti was all about. It was all about lies. Yes. We have been uh, watching lots of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And of course Very Captain engrossed. America. Mm-hmm. And of course Captain America segue mm-hmm. into what we're here to talk about. Captain America the Winter Soldier. The movie that has made lots and lots of money for Disney. And obviously everybody has reviewed this movie to death. It's been out for a few weeks now. So a review is sort of pointless at this point. You all know if you've seen it or not seen it or write a review or seen a video blog, you already know what you think of it or what you will think of it or you will watch it eventually. So we're deciding to change tactics and do something fun and interesting and different. We're going to take two movies that you would never think to compare and attempt, and perhaps fail, but attempt really hard, to compare and contrast them. And Obviously, review them both at the same time. And review them both at the same time, but I mean, you know, it's it's more interesting to see what kind of... Movies all have a narrative thread. You know, all kinds of movies, they have a good story, they, they tell a story, and they always tell a story. They're you telling know, the hero's journey. They're timeless tales. Hero's journeys are timeless. They all kind of have the same threads, conflict, resolution, you know, relationships, what they mean, man versus nature, man versus himself, man versus man kind of thing and so we're deciding to take two chilly movies Captain America the Winter Soldier and Frozen let it go (laughs) let Let it go go. and compare them together yes one is a children's oriented Disney film that is now soon to be Mm -hmm. a classic film already and if you have a young it's a classic child. in the in the pocketbooks already. Yes, and if you have a young child, I'm sure that you are so sick of hearing Idina Menzel sing "Let It Go" that you may be banging your head against a wall. So we'll Never. keep it. We'll restrain. We'll refrain ourselves from singing it too many times. And Captain America: The Winter Soldier is the latest installment of the Avengers epic. People have said that it's better than the original Avengers. Yes, people have said that it's better than the original Captain America. Yeah, well, that's, that's obvious. A, that's, yeah. yeah, is that an obvious thing? It is. It's it's a quantum leap from the original the Winter Soldier, Captain America. It's, it's a totally different movie. It is, and the Winter Soldier was a surprise for me because this was one of the movies I was actually nervous about. Um, because I'm I'm really not. I've never been a big fan of super patriotic heroes because I always feel like they're a little too clean, a little too squeaky for me. Oh, you don't like Superman the big Boy Scouts? And, yeah, Boy Scouts are boring. I like yeah. I like my antiheroes and I like my kind of dark and twisty guys, but... Would you consider Spider-Man a Boy Scout, or...? Spider-Man's a nerd. He's sort of in his own oh, category. Okay. He's a troublemaker. He's a little imp. He's an impish That's kind right, of... He's yeah. an impish kind of hero. He's more like a puck, yeah. Yeah, he's a puck, and, and it's different. But, you know, I'm talking about, like, our Supermans, or Captain Americas, or... Who else have we got going on in the, the super patriotic land? Um, You're better at this. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of... Who the super patriotic, invincible character would be? I think it would be Super Patriot, but he's like a uh, Vietnam guy. Yeah. Um. Beyond the the big blue too. Captain Marvel's a little. It's 
castle. Yeah, but he doesn't have a country. This is true. And he's an actual boy. This is also true. Okay, Frozen. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We digress. We digress into, uh, okay, our Frozen versus Captain America the Winter Soldier. So. So we've kind of, like, written down a bunch of, like, thoughts and comparisons, and this is the first time we're doing this. So. Off the cuff. Even though this is episode six, we're still figuring out a good format for midnight movie matinee. We're, uh, yeah, we're great at this. It's (laughs) awesome. (laughs) Okay, so both movies obviously put out by Disney. Yes, that, ooh, that is one compare that cannot be denied. Both put out by Disney. One by Disney Animation Studios and one by the Marvel Studios to... Monikers under the Disney name, which will soon rule the earth and make us all into its willing slaves. Both stories are kind of stories about brothers slash, you know, sisters. They're about relationships. They're about estranged relationships. Like, as familial relationships. Yes, they're about estranged relationships. Um, Whether estranged through death or estranged through secrets... Which, I mean, kind of a bit of both. You know what I mean? And when it comes to secrets, secrets is a major, major theme in both movies. Um, Secrets that destroy relationships. Secrets that change the nature of what everyone thought things were. And it's about those secrets coming to light and being exposed. Which I guess you could say it's a lot of movies, but I don't know. I think particularly it's kind of fun, but... Because Frozen and it's, yeah, it's kind of got a comparison. I wonder if our, like, WikiLeaks society has contributed to uh, the to these movies about secrets being exposed but I think on a giant been, level and I stuff like that. I think we've always been into the idea of, I think that's always kind of what con- conflict has been. Is You know, a lot of movies they have someone knows something, someone else doesn't. That person doesn't want that other person to know, but of course they have to find out because if they don't find out, there's no movie, there's no story. Yeah, James Bond doesn't win. But I think that Winter Soldier is definitely an example of our WikiLeaks society. I mean, the whole concept of the idea of hyper surveillance of our digital world being both our greatest savior and our greatest enemy is a real serious thing that we think about all the time now. I mean, human beings have essentially given up their right to privacy as much as we want to think oh no no no, i still have privacy you really don't if you've got an instagram account a facebook account a twitter account a google plus that you never use and it's just sitting there account youtube this and that and whatever you've you've given out your privacy everything that you do is documented you run around with these things on your phone tracking your every move they track it without you even asking them to most of us have seriously if you really think about it, given up our right to just not be there. Do you, you know what I mean? We're all there. And we imagine that there's like somebody on sitting around <laughs> on the cloud. We Who, are, that cl- whatever the cloud is, you know, that thing is terrible. I imagine the cloud is like in the Matrix Reloaded, where it's just some guy sitting in a bunch of, a bunch of computer screens. Just like staring at everybody. And staring at everyone's lives and being like, Jenny <laughs> a, just got engaged. <laughs> wearing a white suit dressed like the, ca- uh, the captain. Yeah. Uh, what is it? The colonel? KFC colonel? And the KFC colonel. <laughs> I, for some reason, whenever I think of that old man in that movie, I can only think of Will Ferrell playing him on the MTV Movie Awards. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I can't even remember his face. I, I don't remember, remember Will Ferrell's what he face. Like. <laughs> Will Ferrell ruined the Matrix. Oh no! No no! Damn you, Will Ferrell! <laughs> but um, yeah, no, we've. So I think the Winter Soldier was great in the way they played to that relevancy, and I didn't. I didn't think they would do that, but it it makes a lot of sense, especially in the context of Captain America. So I guess going back to Frozen, I mean, Frozen's obviously not about that. It's about familial secrets destroying upon But themselves. they're but just as relevant to the story because it's, instead of being this giant espion- espionage network that's getting taken out, this infrastructure, it's this entire kingdom's infrastructure that's, that's taken out. That's falling apart, yeah. It's kind of like, you kind of wonder, like, how the hell, when you really start poking at Frozen, you're like, who? <laughs> it's like, okay, how long were their parents dead? And this woman is just sitting around or is it that the coronation happened like right after her parents died is that what they're trying to say 
I think that it was because the there's parents, a three years later. Yeah, was it was it three years later? I think it's like ten years. She sings the song. <laughs> what song? Do you want to build a snow band? Yes, but their parents. And that's like died. ten years, and then no, three their, years after their, their parents, parents died. Died? Did three years pass? Did it say three years later? I'm pretty sure it said three years later. I. I it's a very popular number in movies that is to a very jump forward. Movie, but and we just finished watching Parks and Rec, and they did a three years jump. That's yeah. They did just do a three years jump. That season finale was awesome, and I loved it. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be certain about this. We're gonna confirm it was a three year time jump because I feel. Okay. Now, while you're digressing. Yes, it's right. You're right. Three years because their parents have. To, Elsa has to come of age. So this is my thing. Elsa's ca- the cast. The castle's been locked down until Elsa comes of age. Who's been ruling this castle? Who? Who? They never introduce us they to like the magistrate the, the war or whatever. council or the like the council of 13. Danny, there's no war council in, in Disney Arendale, like, Kingdom I'm Universe. I'm just saying that there's got to be some people sitting at Oh my their gosh. Desk. What? Can you imagine if they did like a Game of Thrones war movie with all the Disney princesses? Oh god. And like you'd have like Aladdin and all his stupid Agrabah soldiers. <laughs> Versus, like, they're stupid? yeah, because they all wore those. They they chase around a guy who's stealing uh, apples, and they you jump on his head. You can't steal apples, and it's wrong. Anyway, I'm kidding. So yeah, so Aladdin, <laughs> Aladdin and his Agrabah soldiers versus Belle and what? Like the they're not enchanted dishware anymore. Did he even have soldiers? Did the Beast have any sort of? He had security? the knights in shine. He had the knights armor. Those so knights, those gotta be real knights. You no? think they were real knights? I guess. Yeah. But the whole castle was enchanted. All the inanimate objects came to life, and the people became inanimate objects. Mm. There's a lot of holes. No, it would be like Rapunzel <laughs> army. Oh, well, Rapunzel uh, had an army for sure. Rapunzel definitely had. They an army. had. They have their. They'd um, be the ones to start the war. They have their skillet army. They have their their pan army. That they knock people. That's violence right there. Yeah. You know, they joke around a lot in that show of that movie about hitting people in the head with skillets. Those you things can are have a concussion. fucking heavy. They'll kill you. You can have a concussion. That is a serious murder weapon. She was a violent person. There should be like a violence warning before that <laughs> when it's on TV. It's like, please do not hit anyone in the head with a skillet. You will <laughs> kill them. It's really bad. Thank God Frozen doesn't have any skillets. Yeah, Frozen doesn't have skillets. It just has snow monsters and and other things. And teaching kids that it's okay to go out into the snow. To the woods by yourself. Uh, Into the woods by yourself. No, that's not what it teaches you. Meet strange men in the dark. It teaches you about the love between sisters and the love between family and secrets are bad. All right, so let's round this back to Captain America versus Frozen. Because we're tangent. Tangents. But that's the fun. That the, is fun the fun is in the, the tangents. tangents. So I think Steven made different notes, but I kind of tried to match up some of the characters to other characters. I did that too. You did that as well? Okay, let's start with you. What did with you... me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Before, okay. Uh, I made a list of all the characters. Okay, I was trying to figure out who is Hans. And I, I think it's pretty easy. Who do you think Hans is? I think it's Alexander Pierce. Aha! Uh-huh. I also thought it was Alexander Pierce, but I also thought Alexander Pierce is the father figure. Um, because I believe that Nick Fury and Elsa match up pretty closely together. So you think that... Oh, just everyone knows. Spoilers, spoilers! These are the spoilers, spoilers! <laughs> Spoiler alert. In case you didn't know, it's going to be full of spoilers. We're, this movie came out like three weeks ago. Fuck yeah, you. so get over it. And Frozen Deal came out it. like fucking six months ago, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you haven't watched them yet, you're lame or blind or something, and I apologize. Some people still haven't watched them because they're still making money in the bank. That's true. Alexander Pierce, he... Do you think that he's telling Nick Fury, conceal, don't feel? Yes. Put on a show. Here's my thing. This is my Nick Fury and Elsa thing. Obviously... The context is... You know, the, obviously the context is different than the details, but if you boil it down to the little... The 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 mate. If you if you sort of arch it over, Nick Fury's world is built on secrets. It's built on conceal, don't feel. He's built this world where he has to keep the status quo. That's his job. As you know, that's what Shield does. Shield keeps the status quo. It keeps the world running. It keeps it safe. It tries to eliminate threats. And every time a new threat comes, whether it escalates something or changes the game, they have to adapt and learn how to deal with that new threat. 
and that's their job. So Nick Fury's life is built on these secrets, and he brings in Alexander Pierce into his world because Alexander Pierce is someone that he trusts, someone that will give him the advice, will tell him how to keep these secrets, will tell him how to make this world and keep the status quo. Elsa's in the same situation. Her father and her family, but especially her father, because all the scenes are between her and her father. Her mother, like, never gets involved. She's just kind of standing in the background. That may just be Disney's fault, because Disney apparently has this thing against mothers. I don't know what it is. It's weird. But anyway, so, <laughs> um, it's kind of like the father is the one saying, you know, put these gloves on, or don't go outside, or stay away from your sister to protect people, because you're a dangerous person. And so it's kind of like Nick Fury and Alexander Pierce in this relationship where they're like, these secrets are dangerous. We can't tell these secrets. These secrets shouldn't be out. And so when the father figure dies or fails, rather, just like Alexander Pierce fails, it's kind of like now they're in uncharted territory. They're in a world that's new and different. You know what I mean? They have to find their own way, find their own secrets or learn how to keep or reveal their secrets. And so I kind of think that like, the world, I think Elsa and Nick, what happens to them is their worlds come crashing around them. Their father figures fail them. The game the game changes. They get exposed. Uh-huh. And they now have to deal with a new world. Like, what happens to Nick? He finds something out that he shouldn't have found out. He gets almost killed. And then he finds out that everything that he's been fighting for to keep the status quo for was the status quo for something that he'd never want to keep status quo. And Elsa is the same, you know, it's like the same thing. Elsa, she breaks out and she realizes and she becomes, and she everything that she feared becomes realized. People see her powers and they freak out and they go, oh my God, she's like a fucking monster. And she runs away and she decides she has to build her own world where she can, like, break free and change the status quo. You know what I mean? Like, for her status quo, it's like, well, I want to be free and use my powers and I don't care. And for Nick, it's like, how do I get back the the ideal that I created? How do I get back this fantasy, you know, this thing that wasn't a fantasy to me, that was a very real thing? And, oh, yes? I was thinking that, because I never even considered to give the king and the queen placement on my list of of course you didn't of characters <laughs> and and now as you're talking i was thinking that maybe they are like agent carter and the original shield and they are uh they're they they make the choice to keep secrets and that's like the choice to bring in hydra scientists which was the most Horrible choice. Why would you make that stupid it's, compromise? I know. It's just, it kind of like looking you back. You won the war. Yeah. It's like you won the war, but you just, but that's the thing though. That's exactly what people did. That When they're bringing in the Hydra scientists, you have to think Nazis. That's what they are. They're the mm-hmm. Nazi scientists. And we did that. We brought in Nazi scientists. These people that did horrible things. We made compromises because the unfortunate thing was, that I think the attitude that people had were, and I think the attitude that they had were Agent Carter and them, was that if they're not working for us, they're working for someone else. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like this, they needed to trap this information so that they wouldn't be putting it to use in another part of the world and creating a security threat against the United States. And unfortunately, that's how that happens a lot. This why some places we protect warlords. Why do we protect warlords? Because they protect our status quo. Because they have something that we need. And in order for us to get them, we have to protect these people that are abominable. They're horrible. And I don't think it's a good thing. I'm not defending this, like, thing. I think it's ugly. And I think it's a very dark part of our you know, international Uh relations in our society, but it is a very, it's it's a real thing. It is what it is. It's the truth. We do it all the time. I think I figured out how the war starts now. The Duke of Wesselton is so pissed that he's banned from trade. He he starts starts a war. war. That's exactly, yeah. And he's probably only been around because it was like his dad's decision to keep Wesselton close. Imagine if the Duke of Wesselton is like, 
the partner in trade, when they say Arendelle's their partner in trade, what if, like, Arendelle's their biggest partner in trade, and mm. Arendelle has something that they can't get <laughs> anywhere else? That's how wars start. They have all the ice. They sanction things. They have all the whatever the fuck they have. Yeah, the ice, the reindeer. They have the, the frozen heart. You know, it's, and it's kind of like, what if that's the Ludafisk? I don't know. What if it's all they have? And so now they don't have this extremely important ex- import, and... They have to go to war. That's how wars start. People try to trade and people don't like a deal. They stop the deal. You know, most wars are started about economy, not about anything else. That's but, that's some true facts for you kids. It's true. Get it straight. I mean, obviously there's a lot of factors to war starting, but one of the biggest factors is economic. We have limited resources. But, Everybody wants the resources. Everybody wants the power of the resources. Everyone wants to be autonomous, but no one can be autonomous. And so we live in this messy global economy where you're running around all the time trying to fucking relationship with this one, relationship with this one. We have, we can't exist without each other because no country can be autonomous, I think. I'm pretty sure no country can be autonomous. And without suffering some sort of, you know, lack of resources or whatever. So we run around in this messy, messy economy. It's drives me crazy. But anyway, moving on. Damn you, Duke of Wesselton. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking that Elsa was... It's hard to place Elsa in, like, one character specifically. Well, I think Captain America's Anna. I can agree with that. Yeah. Because he doesn't really, like... He affects the plot a little bit in that Anna decides to say yes to a marriage proposal. And she also decides to, like, I'm going to chase down and stop my she, sister. He go, she goes on a journey of discovery. She goes yeah. on a journey of discovery to fix her relationships with her sister and fix the kingdom. And that's what Captain America does. He goes on a journey of discovery to fix what's been broken, fix S.H.I.E.L.D., and to maybe try to fix the relationship with his brother, with Bucky, after all the horrible things that have been done to him. You know what I mean? Uh, and Winter Soldier was the one that I had the hardest time placing, actually. Well, the Winter Soldier is kind of like Elsa, in that he's forgotten, he's forgotten that love part of himself because he's been so closed off for such a long time. True, in a way, he is like Elsa, yeah. But and he has a robot arm, just like Elsa, obviously. I kind of yeah. thought a little bit. <laughs> She has a robot arm. That would be so cool if the way she got ice powers was because she had a robot arm. No, it's because she was... That, this is like the, the, the 80s anime version of... Uh, <laughs> of the, uh, the Frozen. version? Yeah. Outside your powers. Okay, no. But I, I kind of put the Winter Soldier as like the snow monster. And hear me out. Okay. I'm listening. Because I feel... Okay. Elsa, if Elsa and Nick Fury are their counterparts, Nick Fury, under his watch, created this monster or this harbored secret of the Winter Soldier. This was what going on under his nose all this time. Paid for by S.H.I.E.L.D. Paid for all these assassinations, paid for by S.H.I.E.L.D. With S.H.I.E.L.D. resources. And so it's kind of like the snow monster. The snow monster was created by Elsa as a symbol of her fear and her anger and her wanting to to stop and change the world as she saw fit. So the Winter Soldier's a little bit like that. I mean, obviously, it's kind of... It's short, it's, it's too limited to give the Winter Soldier the role of the snow monster, because the snow monster is literally just... But, no, but he says just as much the snow monster says during the movie. He has, yeah. like, two lines. He has and two lines. One of them's in Russian. And most of the time, he's just big and scary, and he tells people to yeah. go away by killing them. <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, it's kind of like... Through murder. Yeah, through murder. But he's basically telling them, stop messing with my new status quo. This is the status quo that I want. I'm trying to make it the way the world as I see feet. Alexander Pierce's world. Hydra's world. And you can fucking get in my way. That's that's how I feel that he is the snow monster. I, I, I disagree with you on the... The Nick Fury Elsa thing, mm-hmm. because I originally thought Nick Fury is Olaf. Everyone like loves Nick Fury is what you find out in this movie. <laughs> Everyone had like the biggest man crush on Nick Fury, just like the audience has mm-hmm. on Sam Jackson, and they both get like a death and a resurrection scene. 
and uh, and but Olaf's resurrection scene is so li- it's so small and so short in comparison. Well, it's a, it's a different it's a different movie. It's a musical as opposed to a of course action movie, and I'm both movies are top I notch think on both. Elsa gets a real transformation, like. You know, from but, fear to new, and and Nick gets real transformation because he learns to let go of Shield. He doesn't learn. He doesn't learn anything. He learns to hold on to his secrets even tighter. No. Yes, he goes. He goes deeper undercover. You think that's what it is? He's going deeper undercover. But he. But now. But no, because now he knows that there are people that he can trust. You don't think that he trusts Captain America? You don't think he, that he of course he can trust Black Captain Widow? America. He's been stuck in a block of ice. But how, you don't think he trusts Black Widow? See, I don't think that he... You don't think he trusts anybody? I, you think that Alexander Black Griffin Widow is, is a person that you can't trust. You know what I mean? I think that he's done something for her that makes him know that he can trust her. He trusts Maria Hill. That's the only person he does really trust. He does. Because and he trusted her with his secret. I wonder who Maria Hill is in all of this. Maria Hill. I had an idea. You had an idea? For me, I had Black Widow as Kristoff. Black Widow as Kristoff? Yeah. Why? Because they kiss? No. no. Black Widow is Kristoff because Kristoff is the grumpy castaway. He's lone, He's a lone figure. No one really knows anything about him. Right? He comes out of nowhere. Same thing with Black Widow. No one ever really knows Black Widow. She presents a different no. face to everybody she sees. And she's a little bit standoffish. She doesn't trust people. She likes to be alone. She likes to do her own thing. She plays the game, but she really is not that involved. So she comes in, and she comes into Anna's, Anna's adventure reluctantly because... When Captain America has the thing, she steals it from him to sort of, like, push him in. But she's kind of, like, she doesn't... She's kind of afraid. She knows what the Winter Soldier is capable of. She's sort of scared. But she it gets involved because Captain America's like, you have to... You get involved with me. I think she realizes that he's not going to give her much of a choice. It's like she's either with him or against him, you know? And so she kind of exposes... I think it's nice because I think she kind of reveals that there is something about her that's possibly trustworthy to him. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And it, it kind of, like, I kind of feel like she's always, Black Widow is such a, it's a figure because she's like, she has a lot of secrets and she's always something different to everybody. But you could ca- kind of see her yearning to have a trust with someone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You kind of see her yearning to want someone to think she's not just a killer or a gun for hire. Or like, like that whole situation where at the end where she testified in front of the government, I would never think that she would do that ever. Yeah, it doesn't I would seem never like... think that she would want to do that. And so it's like, why? Why did she do that? Because she maybe she likes the hero moniker. She I, likes well, that she, sort she of was, title that she gets. She was comfortable enough to step out in front of the world and defend it from aliens. That's true. And be on the news and be a part of the Avengers. But yet, so but with the yet, Avengers comes fame. But you have to no. But what you have to think about is this. Yes, she can't accept with the Avengers. But who the fuck is paying attention to the girl in the black leather suit? Who when- isn't? Who isn't? It's a cock fest. And there's the hottest chick right there. But my point being, Steven, All is the there's guys a giant are. green guy. There's a robot man. There's but a there's dude a- in a hammer. And there's a fucking guy in a big America fucking suit. And throwing boobs. Throwing his shield everywhere. And boobs win out. I don't know. Boobs do not boobs win, win out, out in that situation. No little kid is like, you know what I really want to look at is boobs. Because there's fucking four. I'm, gi- I'm talking about. I'm sorry. I'm bull- talking about I people in the bullshit. Marvel universe. I call bullshit. <laughs> Nobody paid attention to that bitch. She was just sitting there like, oh, there's also no. this girl throwing. You forget things. about Hawkeye, okay? Hawkeye's the Everyone one who no one's about Hawkeye. Hawkeye. But Hawkeye's the same thing. You forget about Hawkeye too. They're the two normies in this equation of insanity. They're the two most normal <laughs> people. They don't partic- Their skills have been honed. By training, which I think makes them far more fucking impressive than the fucking four guys. They're the most are... Batman out of anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're the Batmans. They're the ones who've spent their lives fucking fighting and bleeding and being bruised and cut up and learning how to take pain as a human being, not as a super enhanced crazy person. Those four guys are just fucking things are thrown at them. Ooh, I'm so super smart. I'm gonna build a suit and protect myself from injury. Ooh, I was a tiny skinny wimp and now I'm a giant strong sexy man with perfect pecs. 
Ooh, I was really mad and I had an accident. <laughs> oh, I'm a god. Nothing bad ever happened to me except my family is whiny. Like, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's just like, they're the four, like, ooh, we're so awesome. So everyone's paying attention to them. No one's paying attention to Hawkeye and Black Widow. The real fucking people who have fought and bled to be badass motherfuckers, who have sacrificed things, who did nasty, dark things to become who they are. They're the Coolios, that's cause, but they're the ones in the background. That's because idealism sells and <laughs> realism doesn't. That's because, no, that's because t-shirts sell. And what looks good on a t-shirt? Is a giant Hulk. green angry guy. Uh, going back to the topics at hand, <laughs> I was thinking that Kristoff is actually, uh, damn it. <laughs> I had an answer. Okay, Maria Hill is Sven. She's the reindeer? She's the reindeer. Oh my god, that's so because insulting. Because she just like saves the day the a little bit. I didn't put any reindeer field. She saves the day a little bit. When does Sven save mm. the day? He's he, he takes them through the snow. He's the All, workhorse. Yes. Yeah. All he that's true, he is the workhorse. But he and he does make Kristoff change his mind and come back to the to the castle. Yeah. He's kinda like, hey Kristoff, with my reindeer face, stop oh, the lizard. Kristoff is the falcon. They're both like the comedy relief of the movie. See, I They're the, the warm, was Olaf. glowing heart of the movie. I thought Olaf's the heart of the movie, and so is the Falcon. Olaf no. is the heart of the movie. The movie opens. Olaf with is the Christoph. heart of the movie. But the movie opens with Kristoff no. as a little boy. Christoph. He's raised by a troll king. Kristoff is the fucking. He's the outside observer. He's the. He's a little bit of. He's always believed in the magic. He's never been outside of the magic. He's the outside observer looking and in, coming into this crazy family. Exactly. And the Falcon. The Falcon is on the outside coming in. Olaf is like, okay, Olaf. Olaf is the magic. He's Nick Fury. He's the secret keeper. I guess. But Olaf always tells the truth and Olaf makes people remember what they're here for. So like when. The Falcon is. When Captain America is like, shit, what am I going to do with the Winter Soldier? Oh, he tells him straight up. He's like, you may have to put him down. You may not be able to save him. Olaf. Olaf tells, wouldn't say that. Fine. Olaf wouldn't say put him down, Danny. A Nick Fury <laughs> would never say some people are worth melting for. <laughs> so I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever see Nick Fury saying hello. I'm Nick Fury and I like warm hugs. <laughs> I don't think that would happen ever. He would I, say I like warm guns because <laughs> they've just been fired. Keep on stepping. Oh that was God. the best part of the movie. What, that, that little monologue scene, about that little his monologue, dad? That was awesome. That is pretty badass. It was pretty badass. It was awesome. That's like... that. I think they were trying to give him like a good like Sam Jackson monologue. Yeah. They had like somewhere on their list of things to do was like, we have Sam Jackson. Write him a monologue. Write him a good monologue. Yeah, that's true. He needs one. He needed one. <sighs> and most movies fail to do that. This is a... Co- it's true. This is... Okay, so this is a controversial topic. We can't... Compile. We can't compare and contrast these things. We can't. Yes, we can. I couldn't find. I guess Rumlo would be Wesselton. He could fit into Wesselton a little bit. He is like the Duke of Wesselton. He's a little weaselly mother. And you know from the first time you see him that he's a he's little totally weasel. Bad. Yeah, he's a weasel. He's or I mean Sitwell. Sitwell's a little weasel too. No, but you didn't know. Yeah, you did. You didn't know. know. You had you no didn't idea. Know. You didn't know. It was just totally shocking. It's true. Hmm. Which makes the movie, like, it's so rare in a movie that you get, like, a twist from, like, four movies back that a guy is in who he is. Yeah, is in who he is. And, you know, I kind of feel, okay, when we saw Captain America, we actually saw a free preview of it on the Tuesday before it had come out. Thanks to Max Comics. Max Comics and Collectibles. Um... But I think that we were done a disservice by seeing it early because of the fact that the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode that aired, like, one or two nights later, had Jasper Sitwell being assigned to the Lemurian star. Mm -hmm. And now that we already knew that he was a bad guy, we weren't really like, oh... I mean, it was cool because we knew, oh, oh, wow, that's awesome. But it was kind of like... It sucked because if we had seen it in order... And I thought that's what was so amazing is that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is not even, like, playing. They're like, you have to see this movie or you're not going to know what the 
mm. going on. Like, you had to watch the episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where they Jasper Sitwell gets cast as the Lemurian star, then watch Captain America, then come back afterwards and go, whoa, what's going to happen on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? And then the movie has made the TV show so exponentially better. Yes, it has. Because now there's real... The thing is, when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. started, it kind of had this... It was sort of petering along. I know that sounds bad, but it's true. It was sort of like it was it was playing the waiting game for Captain America 2 to come out. And so it kind of had to have that whole serial, oh, this is uh, this is our magic monster we're going to fight this week. This is the magic monster we're going to fight this week kind of thing. And it started to build with the clairvoyant, and now obviously it's exposed with the fact that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is Hydra and the clairvoyant is Bill Paxton. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra. Spoilers, spoilers. These are the spoilers. Hail Hydra. I think it's too late. We've already spoiled <laughs> all of the things. But they didn't expect us to spoil Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We said spoilers, spoilers. These are the spoilers. Come that on. means spoilers for everything. Yeah. Even life. You die. Everything. Sixth Sense. He's dead. Spoilers. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Casablanca. No happy ending. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> the Matrix. He's Jesus. Spoilers. Another thought I had I didn't get to say mm -hmm. is that the Falcon is awesome in this movie. Yes. And he's like... That's why I want to place him. That's why I put him as the warm, supportive spirit. The truth, the outside perspective. But maybe he's not the outside perspective. You're right. Maybe I'm... All he is is like, yay, Cap, go Cap. But no, but he's... I love the Falcon. I think that they did such a good job in... <laughs> I think it's tough being the new guy in the playing field. Like, all of yeah, these totally. characters are well-established. So it's like, what are you going to do with the Falcon? That I think that they did such a good job with him, and I think Anthony Mackie did too. I think, like, he fits so well. I think I wrote a note to myself about... I said... Um, I didn't like the fact that they grounded him at the end. I really hope he gets his wings back soon. Because that made me mad. That, of like, course, he's going to get better Tony broke. Stark wings. He better. I said, um, I think that they, he had, he felt integral to the story. He didn't feel like something you could just pull out of the story. He uh -huh. felt like they needed him there. And they needed a third party. They needed the Falcon to come in and help them. He did, he could do things because, exactly, because he came out of left field, because everyone at S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't know him. He's like the outside element that comes in to help Captain America and Black Widow. And... It was really cool to see that that was so important. He's sort of like Kristoff. He enables Anna to... To find To, to, yeah, to find right. her sister and stuff. Yeah, you're right. I see it. I see it. I still don't think Nick Fury's mm -hmm. Olaf, though. <laughs> my name is Nick Fury. And I, I like, like warm hugs. hugs. As long as I got my Colt 45. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I feel... I think that I really like... The Falcon, I liked him as a character. I thought he was really heroic. He got really awesome heroic moments. He was like... The soundtrack was really great for this movie. He, I want to see the Falcon movie directed by John Woo so that it would just be no. double twin guns no. in slow motion, no. jumping through the air, and then instead of doves flying by the screen, it would be him Falcons. with his Falcon wings <laughs> flying by the screen. I don't He's want like John the John Woo hero. Involved in anything that this movie is, no John Woo, go no. away, stop it. You already ruined everything with Face Off. They're saying John Woo is gonna maybe do the Expendables four. That's perfect for him. That and would there be really be good. So many doves. Are they gonna fill their quota on doves? Because if they have like twenty five guys, how many doves will it take? Will it take to have like the slow mo action shot? What I what what I would love to see is uh, they should just call the movie slow mo. Because <laughs> that whole movie, there shouldn't be any like fast parts. It's like the Dave Chappelle act, the sketch where he's like everything looks better in slow motion. It should and everything be... in that movie is gonna be in super slow motion. It's gonna be cigar smoke in slow motion. That's true. Explosion, smoke in slow motion. It's gun true. smoke in slow motion. I would like to see the bitch fight between Bruce Willis and Sylvester Stallone. Because <laughs> they just seem like the two biggest divas with each other. Because yeah, Bruce Willis, as we know, Bruce Willis did not come back for The Expendables 3. Because he apparently wanted money. On the, on the Hollywood Babylon podcast, they always uh, joke about the tweet that he sent out, which was, he's greedy and lazy. Yeah, he's greedy and lazy. He's greedy and lazy. Sylvester Stallone believes he's greedy and lazy. It kind of seems like they... It's like they're exes, and they're just, like, really angry at each other all the time. 
because they were all like in it, right? Didn't Sylvester Stallone wasn't he part of the Planet Hollywood thing? Or, like, yeah, yeah, it was him, it Bruce was Willis, Stallone and Bruce Willis, and Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. So it's like they are obviously something happened there. Something happened, and I want to know. It's got to be and so Van Damme's juicy. on the sideline, like. <laughs> Why didn't I get in on the deal? Guys, don't fight. You don't won't serve fight. French cuisine or <laughs> Belgian cuisine? Belgian cuisine? No, I think Van Damme's like, like, because I'm sorry, now that we've seen JCVD, that movie about him, I think that he was like crying, like, life is beautiful, guys, don't fight. <laughs> Let us just do splits with each mm. other. Be I'll happy. stretch you out. You stretch you me stretch out. Stretch me out. We are, we are all friends here. And that's why they're like, don't get Van Damme on this. He's too fucking whiny. I, I feel, I don't know, I want to know what happened with the Bruce Willis and the Sylvester Stallone, and I would love to see, like, a little a little cat fight between between the two of them. Okay, uh, back to the topics at hand. Uh, the Ice Palace, I couldn't decide whether it was... The Triskelion? The Triskelion or the Three Helicarriers is the Ice Palace. Well, it does collapse, so it... They both kind of break down. Yeah. That's true. The truth. Everything goes. Oh, well, it's a it's a movie. So everything's got a, <laughs> everything that's built by CGI must be destroyed by CGI. Yes, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Things built by CGI. I fall. think the CGI though was very good in Captain America. Yeah, it was perfect. It was really. It perfect. was. There was never any doubt. I, I, the, of... the only scene that was like maybe like looked a little too video gamey was when he's escaping from the Triskelion on the motorcycle yeah. and he faces down like a plane by himself. Yeah, that's the only thing. That I was the only know. like that looked like a video game action sequence. But that's the problem, Steven, is you're saying that's the only thing. It all looks like a video game action yeah. sequence. Yeah. How funny, it's just to me, I think it's a very strange world that we live in now where we have technology that gives us the ability to do all these amazing things in film and create things that we could never have created before. And we watch it, but we know that none of it's real. Like, you know what I mean? We know in our logical minds that there aren't, they, no one built three giant helicarriers and they didn't actually explode because the carnage of such a thing would be so infinitely horrid yeah. that it would be like, you know what I mean? But that's what that's what's strange to me is that we're watching these like, movies. Like, imagine we just saw three helicarriers be destroyed. People saw one Hindenburg get destroyed people saw two buildings collapse and it was like the worst thing ever I mean you know I know I hate to bring the it back the Triskelion looked like it would be as big as the World Trade Center exactly and it, it just yeah but this is my thing is that we know these when these things happen in real life the carnage is so horrible and we know that and it reminds us that we're all gonna die and it's scary and it's terrible um but it's kind of like it's but it's so weird to me that they've spent so much money making these things look more and more real because we expect that we expect these things to look as real as possible, but yet we know they're not real. So isn't that weird? Like, I think that's so weird that we, if we saw a movie with bad CGI, we're like, oh my God, who, where did the money go? You know what I mean? We're like, the CGI yeah, was yeah. terrible. It looked totally fake and not real. X-Men but Origins yet, Wolverine. <laughs> but yet it's like, but when we see something that looks so real as to almost be real, like it's, but yet we know it's not real. So we, we, we invest all this time needing these things to look as realistic as possible, even though we know that they're not realistic at all. It's weird. I think that you're, you're pulling yourself into like a, a time, par- a time, into a paradox I loop am, though, where you're just going to be saying like, it's weird, like it's 12 weird. times it's in a row. It's weird. Robot, robot does not compute. <laughs> it's like Futurama. Don't worry, he's stuck in a loop. <laughs> like it's like Bender. Oh god. But yes, it's. I think it's very strange. I think that we live in a very strange time for technology. We want it to be more and more, just like uh, in our faces. But yet, it cre- it just becomes more and more artificial in the real concept of of our existence. That's a philosophy class right there. You just got schooled, kids. In your face. How, uh, any last uh, thoughts? Any fledgling ideas? Still fledgling simmering ideas. That we can grow into giant mountain flowers? Uh, well. Strength? Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man. Let it go. <laughs> That's your comparison? <laughs> Let it go. They're on equal levels? I'm kidding. I'm just. I had never heard of Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man ever. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. you Sorry. Fail. 
I lack soul, apparently. You lack so much soul. <laughs> Marvin, oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Do you think that Cap is going to watch, like... Because Captain America, he has his list of movies to watch and stuff. And like Ooh. pop culture things to watch. Mm-hmm. Do you think that he's going to watch... Someone's going to tell him to watch, like, the original Star Wars trilogy first? Or is he going to watch the prequels? And then told, watch the original no, they, trilogies? In the list, they said, orig- he said no originals. Prequels. Yes, originals. No prequels. Originals. No prequels. It said Star Wars, yeah. no prequels. Why would Disney shoot themselves in the foot like that? Because Disney didn't make the prequels. Now they will make more things. And these new movies are not prequels. They are... Continuations. What? A, what's what's pre... After a sequel. Pre- no. A se- no, they're sequels? Yeah, are they're they sequels. sequels. Are they more sequels? Is there is there something more than the treacles? I think the, I think the problem is, is that Star Wars has become so infinitely confusing because there's so many things now. It's like prequels and sequels and... Bleh, TV show. Yeah, TV show and stuff like that. Can we please pretend that the first two prequels didn't exist? I know this has already been done to death, but I think that Disney could technically rewrite history. I think they have the power. I think they have a time machine. And so I would like <laughs> to write out the first two prequels, like Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. We can keep the third one. It was no, we can't. Why? What's wrong with the third one? Oh, God. It's going to be a whole other podcast. Oh, Jesus. Okay, just quick. The third quick. one... Quick note, I, 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 I said this in a comic store and it got me like a round of applause. Oh, it did? Yeah. Okay, let's hear your round of applause come. Uh, Darth Vader's supposed to be the most badass mofo in the galaxy. We always assumed it's because he hunts down and kills every Jedi one by one. Mm-hmm. Revenge of the Sith totally negates this idea, has the Order 66, so all the Jedis just get punked out by stormtroopers. And then all all he ever does to become the most badass Jedi in the world is kill a bunch of little kids. Yeah, that's fucked up. That that's not worth existing in a universe as good as uh, Luke. I am your father. This is true. Okay, so then Disney time machine, go back all three prequels. Kill Hayden Christensen is a baby. Him, he's dead to us now. Natalie Portman can stay because she's still cool. Oh my god, um, yeah. Liam McGregor can stay because he's still cool. Um, of course, fucking Liam Neeson can stay because he's still cool. But that oh, little the kid, best part. that little kid, and that fucking Greedo piece of shit flying creature that they created. Watto. Watto, whatever his name was. I hated him. And then... The Jewish stereotype. And he was so offensive! The flying and Jewish I was like, stereotype. what's going on, George Lucas? Have you seen Seth Rogen do his Watto impersonation? It's awesome. No, I haven't seen it. It's really good. Yeah. All right, guys, YouTube that. Um, But yeah, just Disney, Time Machine, mm-hmm. go back, start from scratch. Scrub it, start it over. No metachlorians. I don't understand that. I never understood the metachlorians. I think that it was their attempt to make their space opera into actual science sci-fi. fiction. But it's not. It's fine. It's science but fantasy. But it's fine as it's a space fantasy. fantasy. Yeah. Exactly. It's a space fantasy. It's a space opera. And just, yeah, like I, I think, yeah, people, all, I mean, obviously all of this has been done to death. We're just repeating things. But I know people were like. Why are you going to turn something that's supposed to be mystical and awesome and slightly religious into something? Like, think about those people that worship the Church of the Jedi (laughs) in fucking England. Think about how angry they must have been when they were like, oh, it's just bacteria swimming around in your intestines or some shit. Like, think about that. They destroyed their religion. That's like if I went into the Catholic religion and said, no, it's not Jesus. It was just some plumber. Jesus had a high midichlorian count. He had a... she just had a stomach problem and that's what caused him to raise the dead like it's just sort of like to take this back to the topic at hand nick fury totally used a lightsaber to get out from underneath that car yes, he did. That was and into the sewers that was a secret that's that was ooh, super cool remember pat oswald's rant about how they could connect all the universes together i think that was step that one. was the first seed that was step one because we never saw what it was but everyone yeah. used it and every time they use it they went into like the universe of magic tunnel I don't know what that was, but I don't know. Where were they going? Did they go down into the sewers? Is that where they went? How do they know that when they He's burrowed got down logistics. into the floor? You think it was like a portal? He's got like map. He's got like a map Do you under think the city. Was it a portal? No, it wasn't a portal. They don't have. They don't. They're, they're not invincible. Is, they don't have teleportation when, technology. When Maria Hill did it, how did she know that when she went down into the ground, she was going to find a tunnel? 
because everyone acts like the sewers. They have this computers like a, okay. that read out things in three D, and then they touch the three D, and then they look underneath things, Steven, and then they have but blueprints. Steven, this is my problem. They weren't driven somewhere by their choice. They were driven somewhere by Hydra's choice. So how did she know that the place that Hydra was driving them was going to be convenient? Movie magic. You have to because they're deny. super spies and they're ready for everything. You can't deny that's movie magic. It's movie magic. I don't care what you say. It's a lie. <laughs> Do you think instead of "Let It Go," singing "Let It Go," we could sing "Hail Hydra"? Hail Hydra. No. 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 Oh, Do you, you want to build an Arnhem Solo? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to build a helicarrier <laughs> and aim it at some guys around? <laughs> no, he didn't plant the seeds. And he didn't plant the seeds. So he, what do you mean he didn't plant the seeds? He planted all the seeds. Arnim Zola did. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's oh, what I'm didn't, saying. Oh, Duke, oh, Duke didn't plant the seeds. So who planted the seeds? Arnim Zola. The king is the Arnim Zola. Yeah, Arnim Zola is their father. <laughs> So this movie is just all predicated. No, no, no. The Troll King is Arnim Zola. <gasps> oh shit. He saves shields and damn shields in yeah. one in one act. That's true. Damn, just fucking uncovered a mystery. I think we've pretty much run our course. If you disagree with us, agree with us, just agree with us. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit us up on our Twitter at Vundablog. V u n d a b l o g. Cause that's how we do it, like G's. G's, or you can check out our blog, vundablog.com. That is correct. You can check out our blog. Yes. And this has been Midnight Movie Matinee. Woo-hoo. I'm Steven. This and was Danielle. Yes. And you just got frozen by a winter soldier. <gasps> Wait, his name was Winter Soldier, and he didn't do anything cold. Lame. Oh. <laughs> See, I always thought that the... There was wordplay in the Winter Soldier, because also, even though he's literally called the Winter Soldier... Isn't he supposed to be a Russian? Dude? Yeah, he's Russian. That's why he has that red star yeah, on his shoulder. Winter that also Cap is a Winter Soldier, too, because he's, he's a popsicle. He's a popsicle? Capsicle. Capsicle. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. And Cap, I didn't say this, but Cap is a lot like Sleeping Beauty or Snow White from uh, Disney mythology. Yes. I and that he's waking up in and stuff. Most, in the most generic way possible. <laughs> Win! All right. Bye, guys. Bye. America! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Wondercast? Give yeah. it up for Wondercast, man. What an adorable name. Yeah.